What's up guys, Salvation here, I got you a Battlefield 3 commentary on the beta. In this video, I gave you some tips and tricks and tactics and guides, everything you can think of to be completely successful in games. So right now in the beginning, it's really laggy. Um, you might see some flickering of green screen, so that green screen flickering is not my computer. It's, it's the beta bugs I found. Some people have it and some people don't. Um, I find some problems with that a lot in this game. So hopefully you can ignore that and please, please do enjoy the video and gameplay I've been producing. This is probably my 20 minute, first 20 minute video I'll be posting on this today. So right now we're gonna start this off with the topics of the guide. So first thing off, first thing first, having a squad and picking up your friends. Um, if you have a squad in public, most likely you don't have any teamwork and teamwork is the key to winning. I don't care if you get so many kills or no kills, it is all about teamwork and how you take advantage of your team. So always always have your friends, friends is the best, best um, way to have the greatest teamwork you've ever had. Hit on Skype on the PC, chat in the Xbox Live chat party, or go on the game chat on the PSN. So please do always talk, and communication is very vital. Having communication is the most vital thing you can ever do. If you don't have communication, it's like having no control of your teammates or anything. And always follow your communication, don't talk over each other or something like that. So always keep you guys chronologically ordered or anything organized. So having teammate and organized system out, tactics and thinking is a great way to win in the game. So next thing we're going to talk about is the kits. I'm running an assault kit with a UMP red dot. Um, assault kits are for medics and medics are usually they have defibrillators and a medic pack. So always, if you're a medic, use the medic pack as much as possible. Every time I spawn, I would usually drop a medic pack, but sometimes I don't, mainly because they're not in a battle. But I always drop medic packs as much as possible and keep my teammates alive. Having your teammates alive is really good. Instead of waiting a 5 seconds delay of spawning, your teammates will be faster paced out. Meaning that every time you revive somebody or drop a medic pack to keep them alive, the game will be more fast paced and more enjoyable. So always use your kids to advantage. Um, the second kit will be an engineer kit. Right now, apparently, I'm playing Operation Metro, and there is no vehicles. Engineers are built for vehicles to attacking, destroying vehicles, or use them to repair. Repairing vehicles is a great advantage. I'll be posting some Casper and Border to show you some footage of some repairing vehicles, so hopefully I can get some footage of Casper and Border. But right now, we're playing Operation Metro. Engineer is almost completely useless without vehicles, but they're not. They have some guns are really good at um, defending and attacking. But if you use your launchers, launchers are very very good. You should use them most of the time. I will use them most of the time later in the game. But hopefully, we're just gonna start off with the assault kit. Um, I'll be posting some launchers or engineer gameplays. Launchers do help. They destroy buildings, destroy walls, destroy cover from the opposing team. Always want to do that. It'd be awesome when you can pick out enemies with no cover. That what keeps your team alive. So engineer still plays a major role. Now what comes next is the support kit. What support kits do is they suppresses the enemy. Meaning that you usually lay down your bipod and spray and pray. That's the point of support. That's why they have ammo packs. Ammo packs are a very vital thing. Like I said, it's really important to drop ammo packs every time you spawn. I think really every time you spawn your squad, you always want to drop them. Drop them in your objective areas, drop them where you think the most traffic area is. So dropping ammo pack is helpful, but in this game, not many people lose ammo that much, don't know run out, but always drop ammo pack. It helps your teammate a lot, keeps the game going, the guns will be always blazing. Always keep your gun blazing as a support. That's why they always have LMGs type guns. So heavy machine guns, light machine guns, all those types, the spray and pray guns, large clips, the saw, those RPKs, they always keep suppression. They're really useful for defensive play. Uh, right now I'm being defender, so I'm not running the support cam, I'm just running the, the medic, just for the point of my use of the fit players, which is gonna be using later on. So support kit is really helpful on both side teams. Defensive or offensive is still good. Same as engineer, offensive or defensive. Um, medics are more very useful in an offensive type of game since you want to push upwards toward the objective. And every time you die, you always reset back to your place, which is don't you don't want that to happen. So you always want to have a, a medic on your team when you play offensive. Our last class is recon. Recon is a variation of types of way you can use it. You can use it for killing or picking up enemy and preventing them from moving across the enemy line your line 
or we, you can use it as a offensive play which they included a spawn point type the I think it's called radio thing the beacon I don't know, radio beacon, but you can use that. That is very helpful. I don't see much people use it, but when I play with my friends, my friends run the recon tank, you better use that. That is very really good for offensive plays. I don't see much for a defensive. The recon's only thing they can do at defensive play is basically pick up enemy and prevent them from going line. But always, always, for recon, the original jobs for recon to spot people instead of a mobile spawn point. Having a mobile spawn point is really good, and spotting is a great advantage. It's like having a UAV every time in the air. So, spot, take advantage of your scopes. I would recommend you run a semi automatic sniper if you're not really good at sniping, or if you're really good, run a bolt action. Bolt actions are usually one shot kills, and they're really awesome. The SV98 is a good bolt action rifle. I tried it, it's awesome. So, if you're not good at sniping, use the semi automatic, any semi automatic works. It depends on what you prefer. So take advantage of sniping. Don't just sit back and kill people. Especially when you're recon, you sit way too back when you're you're playing as a defensive player. Always want to get close enough so you can get close to the battle. Don't be too far, don't be too close. If you become too close, then you're basically an SMG type person, which is not the right thing for recons. Always run between the medium distance. So medium distance works out and that is always. So after you're going through, we have gone through all four kits. Um, pick the right kit for each situation. Uh, I'm running the UMP for a reason because it's a subway and it's always close to quarter combat. And when you use your gun, always take advantage of everything. As for me, as an SMG person, I will always take advantage of hit firing. Hit firing is a great advantage in close quarters. Never ever hit fire long distance, maybe medium distance, but hit firing gives you ability for more mobility to move side to side and make the enemy misses, miss their shot. So I recommend hit firing with the assault rifles and the SMGs. What's coming next is advantage of destruction. Like I said with the engineer kit, they have the, the RPGs, the launchers, all that good stuff. Take advantage of good destructions, um, they destroy anything that gets in your way. Uh, when it comes to vehicles, destruction is very notorious with tanks, uh, jeeps, all that stuff. You can use jeeps to destroy plywood from protecting some hiding spots, so take advantage of destruction. Now, what's next is objective play. Depending on what your team is on, defensive or offensive team, always play for the objective no matter what. If you see, if you're playing offensive team and you see the entire team right there, you can just go for the kills, or you can stand about maybe five feet away from the objective. Arm the objective first. It puts pressure on the team. Putting pressure on the team makes it very fun. I find it fun to have pressure on upon my team, but it's kind of gives you the urge that you want to defend the objective or defuse it. So arming the objective and defusing it. If the objective is right in front of you and you need to defuse it, defuse it. Even cost your life. Don't be afraid to die. Uh, there's lots of people who are afraid of dying, and dying is something that many people don't want to do, but don't be afraid to die. It's better than losing a game. You want to play for a win. Now, I can understand losing, which is, I'm going to explain at the end of the video, but for right now, we're going to talk about winning. Think of what objectives are. Prefer, I will prefer you to play for objectives over kill death rush shield. Um, KDR does not matter in this game. It's all about army objective. Now that doesn't mean to you can't kill, you don't depend on killing, but killing does help and it keeps the pressure too, but what keeps the most pressure is the objective and you always want to focus on the objective. No matter what, don't take your eye off the objective is your mission and that is the point of your mission. Unless you're playing TDM. So other than that, you want to focus on your objective no matter what defusing. Right there, I sacrificed my life just to try to defuse the objective, but I fail. But I pretty much, hopefully my teammate can redeem themselves, but Eventually, we, they did it and we have to be pushed back. So, if your t entire team does not go for objective, you're gonna have a really hard time in frustration. Now, that's my next topic. Frustration. Many people get frustrated, they trash talk, they do anything to frustrate themselves. Not necessarily their self, not literally taking frustrating, but you don't realize that you're frustrating yourself more and more. When you're frustrated, you know that you're gonna do horrible. Never ever get frustrated. Try to think positive. Always have a positive attitude when you're losing. Having a positive attitude will help you a lot in gaming. I mean, if you try playing a game without a positive attitude, you will really, really struggle and you will be so stressed out. You can't think of anything other than doing it. I don't know what you say. Rage quit. You can always rage every time. 
So usually when you have a raging moment, you usually want to get revenge on someone, which is most of my time where I get killed so many times by the same guy. Now revenging on a guy is something I don't want to do. It's a habit and you want to get rid of that habit. No matter what, the guy will usually get you and you're just wasting your time. Even if you kill him, he's going to come back for you. So do not waste your time with the guy. Just go for the objectives. Don't waste your time with anything else but your mission. So always keep that in mind. Our next move is don't spend too much time in one area. Always be productive. If you're not productive with your teammate, then basically you're just not being a team player. Being productive means that you move around, drop ammo packs, all that stuff. So move around, check the area, check the perimeter, always check your surroundings. Always know your maps right. If you don't know your maps, then most likely you do horrible, like every other map. You will always do horrible when new maps comes out and you try it out as a fact, and I will never see a guy who does perfect, unless they're truly good at the game. So know your surroundings. Being useful with your attachment and take advantage of your gun. I will recommend you, when it comes to the outside, I recommend you run the laser with foregrip and the red dot or anything. Or maybe the A card, maybe it can't be better uh, outside door. When the first map we were beginning, outdoors is always long range. Um, you don't want a flashlight or you get spot easily, so run the laser sight. You want something that improves your accuracy, reduce recoil, so maybe you'd be smart either run a assault rifle or a sniper rifle, so always use your atta attachment for great use. I find a great use in the subway is this, the flashlight, which I didn't use, but a flashlight is really good in the subway. Turn it off when you're not in the range, but when you're in range, turn it on, you completely blind the enemy, and that is a really good advantage you want to take upon. So using full attachment is really good. Now, the selecting fire through is semi burst and fully automatic. You want to take use of that. Fully automatic is close quarter, burst and semi is between the medium and long. Um, there's nothing to be afraid of using semi. Semi is really more helpful than fully automatic when it comes to long range, especially battlefield. Battlefield has a large map, you want to take advantage of semi automatic. That's why semi automatic rifles are made for snipers because they have a great advantage of low recoil and you're taking more precision on your shots so your shots are always on with semi-automatic most of the time um, fully automatic is good for its close quarters you can spray that's the point of fully automatic fully automatic is not meant for spraying praying across the map so keep that in mind semi-automatic fully automatic different types burst is good it's supposedly good in close quarters basically close quarter medium and long, long. Uh, you can try to burst fire in the close burst, but it's not as effective as fully automatic. But burst fire might be fully, might be almost effective as the semi-automatic, depending on the gun. Some guns have a lot of recoil, so it wouldn't be a good idea to use a burst fire type situation. I recommend you using burst in a medium combat situation. Now, getting to the point of our spotting system and everything. Always know your spawning. Um, when you spawn on your on your teammates, your squad, anywhere around there, always choose the right spawn, especially in conquest. Conquest has many, many, many spawns. You spawn your objective and your squad. Having a squad leader, a strong squad leader, helps a lot. Um, keeping your one teammate alive, always have one teammate sitting back. Maybe taking turns sitting back at least set us a great spawn. Now, right there, I'm using an RPG and I'm taking advantage of my destructive destruction and my kit so having to destroy everything is pretty good and you see that guy with the flashlight i killed him now proning sprinting and crouching three most important factors of battlefield to be alive taking cover is really important if you take cover most of the time 90 percent of the time you will always be staying alive um if you stay alive as long as you can being alive is better than being dead uh, like i said that might conjure Dick the reason that dying for objective, but that in, that is the objective situation. Using different situation and different timing is really important. If there's objective arm, then you should go for it. Don't care about staying alive, but when you're trying to defend, nothing's going on. Just try to stay alive as much as possible, especially when you uh, become the offensive or attacking team. Try to stay alive, it helps a lot, and you have a token counting down. You got 100 lives, and you only got two shots to get that objective arm. So always keep in mind, stay alive when you're especially offensive. Defensive don't care about staying alive, but still it applies to them because if you do die too much, they're gonna push up too much. So stay alive helps a lot. Um, taking advantage of proning. Proning does help. Lots of people prone. Prone when you're near objectives because 
it will spot you, so prony prevents you from being spotted. So take advantage of prony standing, sprinting, sprint for your life. Right here, I sprint right here just to get to the the action. Want to get into the action? Always stay in the action. Um, don't avoid the action. Sometimes you can't avoid the action. You should recon to avoid the action. But try and get in the action so you can put the pressure on the other team. That is the key to winning pressure. Having pressure to the other team is a key way of winning in any game, and it puts lots of um, how to challenge to yourself, challenging the other team, and once at the end, the losing team, the winning team will have a great experience. So having a great experience and challenging you guys self is really fun. I find it really fun. I don't know about you guys, but it is really entertaining to play a game that's challenging. Nothing nothing too challenging. Too, too challenging to be too broad and hard. But take advantage of that. Other than that, we have basically gone through most of my tips. And so I hope you enjoy this video and I'm gonna leave this out with the video and hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Other than that, um, if you're interested in my channel, like maybe give you a little depth of my channel. My channel is basically a let's play, and I do gameplays on any multiplayer games such as Modern Warfare, Battlefield, lots of Battlefield. I'm a Battlefield fan. Call of Duty, Halo. I don't have Halo, but I want to do Halo. But other than that, anything that do is like Crisis 2. I like to do a lots of let's play Minecraft. Crisis. At this moment, I'm doing Crisis, but hopefully I can finish it. Uh, this video is wrapping up, and I hope you enjoy this guide, and hopefully you can improve your gameplays. And the last thing for sure is, even though you're losing, you still have fun with the game. As long as you have fun, it's the greatest way. Other than that, later guys, and peace out.